Welcome to Point to Rise, your podcast that gives you permission to dream big, take messy action, and turn your talent into profit while turning your back on perfection. My name is Suzanne Purcell, high performance and mindset coach, former international ballerina, profitable entrepreneur, and founder of Point to Rise, a movement designed to empower dancers. It is my mission to use my own story as an inspiration for today's generation of dancers. And now sit back, stretch, warm up, or zip your coffee and love learning how much it matters to point at yourself first to rise to all that you are capable of. Well, and we are back. Hey, and welcome to another episode of the Point to Rise podcast. Today, we are talking about... Mm -mm. Having the power to make your own choices, your own choice on how to feel, your own choice on how to show up, your own choices in your career and, and how you want to feel every day. And Gina and I just uh, connected and talked about how we're going to set the, the frame of this particular episode in a podcast. And um, we want to start off with a quote. So today we're going to just share one quote and moving forward, um, we will be sharing each a quote that either is um, supporting the topic that we're talking about or just something that really is going on in ourselves and, and we want to pass on. So for me, what, and I was looking through quotes and it really talked to me was this one. Sometimes the weight you need to lose isn't in your body. And I want to start sharing that. I don't know if anybody knows, but I just came back from like a seven week sabbatical for my family. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many messages I got that, that asked me if I'm okay, am I going to get divorced? What is going on in my family? And I could, I could feel prior to leaving, like I knew I needed some space because I had to let go of a lot in order to gain more abilities in my mindset and in my skill set in order to do what I want to do next. Okay. And when I, when we're looking at this quote, sometimes getting somewhere, acquiring something doesn't mean learning new skill set. It means to lose something that we are holding on to that isn't actually ours. And we need time and awareness and discovering what that really is in order to release it and let it go. What do you think, Gina? What, what does this quote like mean to you? Or what does it spark in you, like from your gut? Sometimes there's things we're carrying with us that we don't realize we're carrying until we see like, oh, we feel we're hunched over and we're, we're carrying all this weight that's holding us down and keeping us back. And it's only through awareness of it that it's there to begin with that we can start to unpack the things that are keeping us from really moving forward. And I think of those extra things we're carrying as tethers like a tether that's keeping you in place or a tether that's keeping you in your past or a tether that's holding you to an old belief system. And when we can first be aware of them and then start to remove that extra stuff we're carrying, then we're like a hot air balloon that's no longer tethered to the ground and we can rise to what our true capabilities are. Mm, I love that the analogy with the hot air balloon. Yeah, my job, nothing else to add here. So the next time you maybe feel stuck or feel like you're not where you want to be, it's not because you need to acquire more things. Mm. It's because what you need to let go of is, is somewhere else than where you're looking it might be. Um, so let's, let's get to our topic today. When we're talking about choices and the, the choice that we have every single day, when we get up to choose how we feel, 
was when I learned about that, a whole new world, a completely different concept, something that I had a really, really hard time leaning into because it's like, what do you mean I can't blame anybody anymore? Why can't I, why do I, why do I have to be responsible for how I feel? Why can I not push this to somebody else? That was my, my innate reaction when I first learned about the concept. Because I had spent so much time in um, well, pushing that responsibility to everybody else around me and, and did not look at myself and the power that I actually possess in making that choice. So tell me, how did you, when you first learned around choices that we make, how they impact us and how we actually can make all our own choices like, what did that feel to you? What was the first thing that came up for you? So I think just in general, it's it's good to acknowledge that a lot of the dance world is sort of top down information. Your teacher is the wise one, you are the student, which is true. Um, but there's a lot of top down communication. And we get to the point as dancers where we just say, okay, okay. And we just do and do and, and take on what we're asked to do. And at some point along the way, we start, we stop listening to ourselves and what is important to us. And as you're an artist, that keeps growing until we kind of shut it down because we're doing what we're asked to, be, to do by our choreographers and our teachers. So I think it's empowering to remember as dancers that we do have freedom, we do have choice to decide how we want to show up to the class, how we want to show up to the rehearsal. So yeah, another analogy that comes to mind when I think about how we have choices as a dancer, how we want to show up in the studio is when I think of showing up, I think, what am I wearing when I show up to class? But metaphorically speaking, what are we clothing ourselves with when we show up? And it, it's not our default mode to show up as confident or resilient or curious. I think those things need to be choices that we make, the choices that we cultivate and that we make when we come to the studio to arrive with those clothes on, so to speak. Mm, I love that. So I'm gonna, I want to dissect it a little bit be because... I experienced that the, not the anticipation, but the expectation from the teachers when I step into the studio was that I am motivated, I am here to learn, I am on and I am at like 120%, okay? Um, how I got there didn't matter. Um, and there was also no, no grace no room for understanding that we're human beings, that not every day are we at our highest potential. It is just not possible. And we can get into this in a later episode. But what I mean with is that we have the choice to either give in to, oh, I feel like um, a failure today and an everything that I do doesn't work out, we can give into that narrative that is going on, that is the default in our brain, or, and then with that showing up like that in a studio, hunched over and, you know, not really wanting to be there because it's going to be even harder today and you have perhaps forgotten your why as well, or you make the choice to look at the thoughts that are going through your head as something, hey, Thank you so much for showing up, but I know who you are. I know what you're trying to do, and I am no longer willing to lean into these thoughts. And here I am choosing what I want to think, choosing how I want to see myself, and choosing how I want to feel. Now, is that easy work? Oh, absolutely not. If you think what you do in a studio is hard, do this. Do this every day. Do it four times a day, that's hard. It's hard in a different way because there is so much resistance in, in ourselves, in the, particularly in the beginning, because we don't know yet what it looks like over here as like the end game 
uh, we don't we don't have anybody selling it to us. We have to, you know, sell it to ourselves. We have to keep ourselves responsible and accountable for it. Um, and it is worth everything because it's going to change your life. It's going to change how you show up as a dancer on a daily basis. And it will change the days where you have no energy, where your muscles are super tired, where you don't think you can take another step. Understanding that your mindset is your biggest superpower that you will ever possess, more than your long legs or your beautiful feet, quite honestly. Amen to that. Right? Yeah. And so because you you have acquired these skills through learning and looking at what you bring on the days where you're drained and, and wore down and you've got to show up what are some action steps that you personally take to, to show up in the way that you really want to? Mm. Hey, so first of all, every morning before I get up, I literally scan, okay, what's coming in? How am I feeling? Um, where, where are we at? I'm taking inventory, you know? And some days I wake up like, oh, let's go. Let's do it. I can't wait. I have all of these beautiful things on my schedule and I can't wait to get started. And then there are days where I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. I'm not worthy of it. I can't do this. Why do I have to? All of these things. And once I have completed that scan, um, I rewrite what doesn't work for me. Meaning, do I want to show up as a scary, not confident story written, um, past driven woman, or do I want to show up as the powerful, empowering leader that I know I am capable of? That's, that's my very first choice. How do I want to show up today? And I can show up as a leader, even though I may not be feeling the very best. I can show up as a powerful person by maybe talking about, hey, here's how you show up powerful, even though you may not be feeling it. The, the term of like fake it until you make it sometimes actually applies in teaching us different emotions. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Um, what else do I do? I, um, I have to be outside in nature. Mm -hmm. I learned that it took me, I think three years I just have to be out there. That's where I literally, it's my plug-in. It's my, my energy source. And I recently learned I also have to work out. Mm. And let me reframe that. I get to work out. I, I get to move my body. So, and I've been thinking about this and let's, let's quickly talk about this. Um, as a dancer, as a pre-professional in school, I think I would have never, ever been able to do a workout and then get into the studio and do my eight hours or five hours or what. So that's not possible. So I've been racking my brain. Like how else can you get an output of endorphins before you actually step into the studio? You know, your happiness hormone versus not this one, not the phone, not Instagram, not somebody else's life. No, we need to find our happiness and our power in ourselves, not through somebody else. That's not a reliable source. You are the most reliable. Um, so I don't know. I know I'm throwing this at you, but I, I'd love to hear your thoughts around that. Yeah. So I, I think when you are given freedom, freedom to choose, freedom to show up, it's also implying that you have responsibility. You have responsibility to make the choices to set you up to show up in the way that you want to. So for instance, with you, you take that scan of yourself in the morning. Um, for me, I, I get up early and I have a meditation and a breathing practice. And that really centers me and reminds me of my why and helps me connect with people on a, a much warmer, um, more awake, more present mm -hmm. level. If I don't take the time to do that, I'm not my best when I show up in my job for my family. Um, 
So I think freedom implies responsibility. Mm -hmm. And as dancers, it's so important to learn what works for you. Um, not everybody's a morning person, but you also don't have to have 45 minutes. Even a five minute, very intentional set of what your mindset of what you're going to carry with you through the day can be so powerful. So I think it's, it's also good that dancers, we kind of shed the all or nothing mentality. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we just say, okay, I've got five minutes. My class is about to start. How do I want to walk through the door? You know, what do I want to be clothed with when I go through the door? And, and take the responsibility to, to get in that direction. I think it starts with understanding the power behind having that choice, mm. actually. I, I know, I truly believe me, I know how much easier it is to put everything that you, you think you need to be in somebody else's hand. Because it takes away responsibility. It takes away decisions you may have to make, you know? But let me tell you, being on the other side now, I would not like to go back there again because it was a very powerless state, a very dependable state that I was in where I had no choices. And when we have the choice to do and how we want to feel, yes, it brings responsibility and it brings possibility, so many more possibilities than relying on somebody else, because then you're taking responsibility for your own life. You start creating your own world, how you want to be, how you want to show up, what your career is going to look like, um, what roles you want to dance. You stop believing that somebody else gets to tell you who you have to be. And I think that's where the, the the real magic lies right like we're we're in this belief that it's easier to rely on others to make choices for us where it is it is a prison and i have to say i believe that that was the only way i can sustain sustain myself as a dancer really because that's how we've been taught this is what has been modeled my entire career, my entire time in the studio and the school, eight years, you just do how you're told to. And here is how you have to show up. I didn't have a choice. Did you ever? No. And I think thankfully the, the winds are changing. I think yes, a groundswell now to take into consider consideration the, the whole dancer. So you know, we're starting to see smattering of, of more freedom there for dancers. And I think dancers being their own advocates in the studio is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I love what you said about freedom is a responsibility, but then you're so much more powerful once you take that responsibility. Yeah. I, I think dancers are hard working and we work hard, right? Yeah. We're not afraid of hard work. But, so what's keeping us from doing the work of showing up intentionally and, and with empowerment and, and deciding? And I think it's just being aware of the fact that we do have the choice. Mm -hmm. So I think this conversation is such a, a powerful start to helping dancers to shift their mindset to be empowered to choose. I think this is a really, really, really great question. I want to dive into this a little bit deeper <clears throat> because it's important. It's the part that, that is actually holding back the industry is the why, what did you say? Remind me that, that question, why are we not like we are work hard working individuals. We know exactly how to move and, and work and negotiate with ourselves until we fall over, you know, with our body, like, because it's what we've been taught to do because Somebody down the line has told us that if you want to be successful, if you want to be a professional dancer, you have to do A, B, Z. 
yeah, to work hard. Success is hard. It hurts. Um, and we never ever have explored what it looks like to have a choice. Meaning, what would it look like if it would be fun? Asking different questions. Um, I understand that a certain amount of rigidness is required to become. However, I feel that we've taken it to the other side and to the too much of the scale and we've forgotten why people actually start dancing. So yeah, when we when we disconnect with our why, why are we dancing? We disconnect with the joy of it. Yeah. Then it does become rigid and then we're following a set of rules that somebody else has stamped out for us. And the opposite of that is being aware of the freedom to choose and the responsibility to make take the measures to get us in the place where we show up in the studio in the way that we want to be there. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, of freedom and beauty when we are aware of it. Mm. Okay. Do you want to share a few tips on how, how a, we can gain awareness of what's going on, where we're at, um, because we can't change anything if we don't understand yet where we're actually at. So we can build the path to get to more freedom, more responsibility, more ability and possibilities. Let's start there. Great. I love it. So, so tips to kind of head us in that direction. Yeah. And, and, and how to, because awareness is the first step, right? Like without being aware, you don't know what you don't know, quite honestly. Um, so how can we, or how can you, the dancer, the, the 14 year old laying in a studio right now, having a, a tuck on your soul that, hey, I am that person that only follows. I am not choosing how I want to feel. How do I gain awareness where I'm at? That's a great question. And I think um, one tip would be remembering why you dance to begin with. Mm -hmm. and, and tapping into that joy helps you to show up as, as the artist that you are becoming uh, rather than in fear, am I getting the attention that I want to from the teacher? Am I giving them what they want? It's wait a minute, is this who I am as an artist? Am I, am I bringing all of that with me today? I love that. And, and for me, it would be giving yourself the grace and the permission to also tapping into different networks, meaning yes, you want to be a professional dancer. You want to be whatever your, your idol is. Um, it is not only being found in a studio. It's also being found in, in books. It's found in podcasts. It's found in, in blogs, in, in journals, in IG lives, wherever. But it's not the, the consuming or the consumption. It's about quality and who you're choosing to be around, quite honestly. So there, I'm, get, I'm, I'm actually getting there. Yay. So your circle of influence, that can help you actually to gain some more awareness. So when you look at the five closest people that you're surrounding yourself with, they are actually a mirror of you where you are at. So that would be a good way to start to actually look at them from a 30,000 foot approach, non-emotional, no judgment, none whatsoever. But when you look at them, where are they at? What are you judging about them? What do you like? What do you not like? It's exactly where you're at. That's, That's exactly where you're at. Powerful thing to take a look at. And for a dancer, that might be, who are your five closest friends in the studio? Do they, again, with no judgment, but are they complaining about the choreography or do they, you know, roll their eyes at this certain teacher or, you know, and do you want to be a reflection of that negativity? 
is that who you want to be? Is that who you want to be perceived as? Is that how you want to show up as, as you, as a professional dancer, as a human being, right? And that's where it starts. That's where you can gain some more awareness mm. on actually who you are. Or you could also ask them, if you don't know who you are or what, what, how you come across, you can ask the five closest people. It's a very, very hard exercise to do. Um, and it is so rewarding. So that's a great tip for dancers is to surround yourself with people that reflect the, the way you want to show up, right? In the studio is a, a converse way of saying that. Yeah. Surround yourself with people who embody the characteristics you really love. Hmm. I love that. So that, that would be our advice right now on how you can start today in, in um, upgrading your awareness, actually, um, so you can make perhaps different choices once you gained awareness of who you are and who you actually want to become. That gap in there, like where are you at? Where do you want to be? Awareness is key. And then you take action. Um, yeah. Do you want to add anything? No, I just think it's, well, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's important to point out that, you know, while we're talking about these topics and there's so much, a lot here that nothing that we're talking about happens overnight with a switch mm -hmm. that, you know, it's a, it's gaining more awareness, more awareness, more awareness. And then the change happens over time. We can do action steps, but for these types of changes to really sink in, I think giving ourselves the grace to grow with time and, and be patient with the process of the awareness and the responsibility and the empowerment. Um, it's a seed that's planted and it's gonna take time to sprout and then really take off. Mm, I love that. Isn't it, it's no, no different than learning a new role or a new ballet or creating a new choreography. Um, you know, you, you, keep, you keep going and it doesn't feel like anything. It feels hard. It feels like you're making no, no improvement whatsoever. It just, your body is in resistance over and over and over again. And then there will be that magical moment. It will not, it will not announce itself gloriously you just will know that oh I actually now stepped into where I wanted to be yeah and it takes persistence and consistency and a lot of love mm -hmm. yeah beautiful well, well thank you all right you guys thank you so much for tuning in today um we hope that we could give you a few nuggets to take away today to implement, we would love it if you could share them on Instagram and tag both of us. Um, Gina is under dancer3.6.0. You will find that in the show notes and myself. And we are very much looking forward to your shares. And also if there's anything that you guys want to talk about that you want to know more about, if you want to know more about us, do let us know. We love to hear your voices. We're sending you so much love till next time. Bye. Take care. Thank you so much for listening. If this message resonates with you, please pass it on to someone who needs to hear this right now. And if you like what you've heard, your feedback will go a very long way. If you just take 30 seconds and leave me a five star review, that would mean the world to me. Till next time. Point at yourself to rise to all that you are capable of.